Good evening, ladies, as well as gentlemen. Papa Boris here with some more Hearthstone Arena action. I was 5-2 at the beginning of the last video, now I'm at 9-2. Can't complain about that at all. Apparently I had some pretty long games since I only played four of them in like a 45-minute video. And that wasn't exactly 45 minutes, it was about 40 minutes, but still, it's pretty long. Ten minutes a game. Longer than usual, but I guess this is a pretty top-heavy deck and it's geared up for the end game. Now, what I predict is going to happen is I'm going to lose this next game because I've been doing a lot of that, losing at 9, losing at the start of a video, and then having to start a new arena run. Anyway, we're up against a Warlock Dog of War. This is a new class, so in the last video, played, what, a Paladin and a Shaman and a Rogue? And, ah, oh, I can't remember who the other thing was. Ball sacks. Oh, uh, what was it? Can't remember. Yeah, it's not coming to me. Maybe another paladin? I have no idea. Okay, yeah, it was definitely a paladin, a shaman, a rogue. Was it another druid? No. A warrior! I played a warrior. That was the last one, a warrior. And now we're up against a warlock, so it's five new classes in a row. It's actually pretty un pretty unlikely, if you know statistics, pretty unlikely, if assuming everything's random, which it's not, pretty unlikely to face a different class for five games in a row. Is he going to play a Voidwalker? Because that would annoy the bejesus bajonkers out of me. He is! Oh, no, that's terrible. Well, this is bad. Okay, got just a little bit less bad, but it's still pretty bad because this is clearly an aggressive Warlock deck. And with that opening and my hand, he's got a pretty good shot of running me down. I have no Starfall and no Starfire. I do have Starfire. I have no Swipe and no Starfall. So um, he's just in really good shape. Now I'm, I want to use Claw to kill this Raptor, but I can't. I can Claw Shapeshift to kill the Voidwalker. Now I'm going to play the thing. So my gamble here is he's going to divert this 3 damage, killing my Acolyte. But he could also use like a Dark Iron Dwarf or something. And, or not a Dark Iron Dwarf. He's already used his coin. An Abusive Sergeant to like buff this up and have it kill the Acolyte. Crap, this is bad. This is really bad. Okay, so I gained 3 health with that Acolyte. It was a 3 mana cycle heal 3. And I'm in trouble, because he's still got his full 3 mana, of course, he's got stuff. Swipe would be pretty fantastic here, it's not like I have two of them in my deck. Oh my god! Now, folks, this is an important learning moment. Do not be tempted by the Yeti here. You play Swipe and you clear his board. You have to do that, because uh, you need to preserve as much of your health as possible against these types of decks. Now he's going to play a bunch of junk, and now I can play the Yeti. And a claw and hopefully kill something, provided there's no more freaking void walkers. Shield bearer! Wow, this guy built a pretty good aggro deck. Uh, could be worse though. Does he have another one mana minion? Okay, so it could have been worse. He could have had another one mana minion. And I did get Sludge Belcher, which I will play in lieu of the Yeti because the claw doesn't do anything. Now, the Sludge Belcher does not kill the Shield Bearer quite like the Yeti does, but I'd rather preserve my health than kill his stuff quicker. That's just my judgment call right now. Frostwolf Warlord could have been worse. Um, it could have been worse, not by much, admittedly, because honestly, uh, Starfire would have killed this thing, and that would have been really nice if that would have happened. But we're still doing okay here. It sucks that I'm using my Divine Shield against the Shield Bearer, but you gotta do what you gotta do against these, these aggressive decks. So he's got a 6-6, six, six, but he will get slowed down, hopefully, against the Sludge Belcher. Hopefully he doesn't have a Silence, though he could very easily. And I have Mark of the Wild, which is very nice, so with the Chillwind Yeti, it makes a 6-7 taunt, which is pretty slick. Alright, he's gonna pop my Belcher. Uh, pop my Belcher really sounds dirty. Okay! Hey, baby, wanna come over and uh, pop my Belcher? Hey, 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 okay. Um, what I want to do here, I've got options now that I finally drew my swipe. I can swipe the Warlord, this goes down to one health, pop the slime against it, use that. Still play a minion? Wow, that seems good. Yeah, let's just do it. Again, you just gotta keep your board clear. Wait, what? Whoa, whoa, hang on a minute. I just, I don't know what I just talked about, but definitely that made no sense. If I hit this, this goes down to four health. Yeah, I can't use, yeah, yeah, we need to swipe this guy. Right, yes. We swipe that guy, we use the slime to finish it off. Iteration number one. We use Archie Commander to finish off iteration number two. Do I claw this thing? Taking four damage. Beep, beep, beep. Yep, we're gonna do it. The reason is I wanna keep this Blue Blue Warrior on the board. I wanna have as much board presence as possible against this guy. Okay. 
So, smoke is cleared. What does he got? Four cards <coughs> to my five. He wants a mortal quail here. That would catch him back up. That would give him up another card. I can make a 6-7 taunt with two cards, which is risky if he has a silence or if he has, even worse, a siphon soul. He has not had any cause for using a siphon soul yet. And siphon soul is one of those cards a deck like his would like to have just to give him, you know, some end game potential. Okay, this is a bit scary. Of course, with these void walkers, void callers, you never know if that's just a bluff or if he's just going to get something really amazing. But I'm not going to leave this on the board. So we are going to give it to him. Hopefully it's just not like a Doom Guard or a Dread Infernal. And just see what happens. Yeah, hey, it's a Doom Guard. Well, that does, you know, hinder our plans. A tee wee tee beedy bit. We're going to have to now use the Blue Blue Warrior. And the Pot of Paper was a pretty good top deck off that Starfire. So I think it's better than playing the Panther. Because this is more durable. And I can buff it and give it Taunt. And then have stuff come out of it after it pops. Arja Commander will kill the first iteration of this. No, he's he's going for the face. Okay, that's what he's doing. Yeah. So this is why it's important to protect your health against these types of decks so much. Okay. Well. Do I play a taunt here or not? That's the question. Do I play this Mark of the Wild? See, I want to play the Power of the Wild to make this a 2-3 so I can kill that. I could play this. Panther, Power of the Wild, and not play a Taunt. Alright, we're going to go for it. I am risking here that he um, has really good burn potential. This is a really strong play. But I'm going down to 14 health. I'm judging that 14 health is fine. I'll be okay. He's not going to kill me with just three cards. And he might not kill me this turn, but again, if he has lots of Charger stuff, he, uh, he might be able to kill me in the next couple of turns. Alright, Summoning Portal doesn't immediately do anything that great. He gets a Lord of the Arena, which is fine. I'll kill that with my buffed up Panther. Again, that's actually not the first time that's happened. This thing, oh, I'm really glad to see this, because this, this is garbage. This is absolute garbage. It makes no difference. Okay, so let's keep it simple. Keep it safe. Actually, I could mark the wild my Yeti and, uh, and kill this and let the Yeti live. How do we feel about that possibility? How do we feel about those apples? I could shapeshift into the... Hmm. Okay, we're gonna throw away this guy. I will use my Yeti to kill that thing. Pop the spiders. Play that. Mark of the Wild. So, I'm gonna Mark of the Wild the Pine Size Summoner, and the reason for that is it has four health just like the Yeti does, but I wanna leave the Yeti alive in case he top decks a Soul Fire. Or a what's his face? Shadow Bolt. That way he's leaving my Yeti alive and killing the Pinesa Summoner, whom I don't care about at all. But I want this to be big enough to kill the Web Lord. Okay, so he's life tapping pretty freely because he's got a lot of health. And his minions are too cheaper. So he could like play, you know, two ogres right now, for example, then he'd win the game. So it's by no means over. But if he doesn't get two good minions right now, or really good removal right now, uh, he's going to be in trouble. So he plays a Voodoo Doctor, which is unimpressive. Fabulously unimpressive. And, yeah. Interesting, so this thing actually, did it cost him three mana? That's very weird. You would think it would cost him one mana, because it gets plus two from the Web Lord, but minus two from the summoning portal. I guess the summoning portal counts first. So it's like one minus one, two is one, because it can't go below one. And then this erupts it up to three. That's not what I would have expected it to work like, though. Okay. So what we'll do is the following. I will shapeshift to kill the Voodoo Doctor. Can I kill him? Five, nine, ten, eleven? No, I can't kill him. We will kill the summoning portal. And I'll just leave that Weblord alive. I'm not concerned about a Warlock having a 1-4 versus a 4-4 four, four, and an 8-8 eight, eight taunt. And this might screw him up. And it's not going to screw me up. If it screws me up, I can kill it then. But it's not screwing me up yet. Alright, he gives a Desperation life tap here. That's pretty desperate with an Iron Bark facing you down. You don't want to generally do that. Maybe he's fishing for a Siphon Soul. That is a Warlock's best answer to Iron Bark. Otherwise, Warlocks are pretty hard-pressed to deal with that particular card of mine that I just top-decked. Again, not that it's that lucky. I did have one of those and two Ancients of War, so they were going to come up sometime. We're halfway through the deck here. Get in there and fight. 
All right, he did have an abusive sergeant, which he paid three mana for, which is comical. So if I had to use the Yeti to hit his warlord, web lord, uh, my Yeti would have died from that knife flick. Not that it matters, I was still gonna kill him. So. Okay, good game, Dog of War, or Dog of Wart, what was he? Anyway, made it to 10 wins, my prediction was wrong. I did, in fact, break beyond nine, so that's great. I am super, as well as duper, thrilled with that happenstance. Happenstance? I don't know what the, I don't know what the right word it is. With that eventuality. Kapahan. That sounds like you're inviting someone to do something dirty with you. Hey, baby. Yeah, want to come over here and Kapahan? <laughs> okay, we're going to move on and appreciate the fact that for the second time in this run, I've got a zombie chow in turn one. And I've even got a good two-player curve. One, two, three. So this is pretty good against priests. You don't really, uh, as a priest, you don't really want to use uh, Shadow Word Pain to kill Zombie Child, but you don't have anything else that will kill it. Fairy Dragon, it cannot be killed by Holy Smite or Shadow Word Pain, which is really good. And then the Acolyte of Pain, you know, not my favorite turn three play per se, but if your turns one and two plays are fine, then the Acolyte can be nice to give you some card advantage and set you up for the end game, which this deck wants to do because this is an endgame focused deck. Not that you know it from this marvelous beauty of an opening hand though. Only thing I'm missing is removal and mulligan my starfire and my starfall, or sorry, my swipe and my starfall. Got all those S removal spells really making it difficult. Um, okay, so here I think the right move is to play the fairy dragon. And the reason for that is that it will kill a three toughness minion and the spider will not. And I wanna just be able to kill a three toughness minion if he plays one. I just want to do it. Even, a even if he coins into a golem here, I would just throw it at the throw this at the golem and then use the zombie chow to finish off the damaged golem. Wow, he heals himself, so he's got a very slow start. This is actually quite remarkable. I'd like to comment upon that because it's not often the second player does nothing on turn two because they have the coin. So you'd think if they had like any one, two, or three mana things to play, they would have played something on turn two. So let's see how good this stuff is. Now you can start playing, you know, four drops. You could play Senjin here, that'd be good. I'd have to throw both the dragon and the zombie chow at it to kill it. He's going to Shadow Madness, which will kill two of my creatures, just like a Senjin would have. Except that the Death Rattle fires on his side. He he didn't do that wrong. He could not have stolen my fairy dragon. So that actually worked out really well for me because it means that he did not get five health. Well, the story then is that I got off to a fast start. On turn four, he killed two of my creatures. My third one, sadly, was this really weak, stupid thing. And now he's actually in the game. He's totally 100% in this game with a 3-6. And two of my creatures dead. I didn't have, like, a fast enough start. Balls. I really wish I had, actually, Mark of the Wild. I would have put this on the Acolyte, made him into a Sengen. Run that into that. Get a card. Four, five, okay, we're gonna have to do this as much as it sucks. Because I can't let that guy live. Now, do I Starfall or do I Panther Shapeshift? Hmm. I think it's worth Starfalling this thing. Keep the Panther on board. It's risky for Holy Smite, I suppose, but still, four damage is nothing to be sneezed at. He's down to 20 health. And, uh, he plays a big minion, the Panther will, will take most things down, or at least help take most things down. Yeah, well, considering how fast my start was, this guy's actually doing great with that Shadow Madness. And me having an Acolyte instead of something good. He goes up another card here. He's playing with fire just a smidge by doing that. Because he's letting me keep this Panther and hit him again. That's where his life is starting to get into slightly low territory. Of course I get Mark of the Wild to turn late, of course. Well, what we're definitely doing here is clawing this Pyromancer. Because uh, this Panther, I mean, I'm taking this Panther for, for a ride. I'm taking it for all it's worth. Question is, does he have Holy Nova? If I play Ooze. And then the spiders, you can Holy Nova, it'll kill everything, pop the spiders. That'll be his whole turn, though, and if he doesn't have a Holy Nova, he'd lose. So, okay, not lose, but be really, really behind. So I am gonna just risk the Holy Nova here, that'd be his whole turn. Spiders pop out, I'm still plinking him for two damage a turn, I can actually put Mark of the Wild on one of them, plink him for four damage. Squire. Doesn't have a Holy Nova, has a Silver Hand now, which is perfect. Oh my god, because I can kill that with Swipe. I don't even care that that's just a one for one. I Oh, hold on, I might be able to kill him. What is this, four, seven, eight, 12? 
He's down to four health. He's down to four health. Heals to six. Swipe doesn't kill him anymore. What? But if I swipe and mark of the wild now, this will kill him next turn, unless he plays a taunt. Or I could just swipe and shapeshift to clear his board and attack him in the face. Yeah, let's just do this. This is fine. So we're gonna swipe, shapeshift, hit him for eight damage, which is not to be dismissed. This panther has been really cleaning house. And now I'm actually yeah, basically threatening the win with Argent Commander plus Mark of the Wild. That's six damage in my hand. I just need this ooze or this panther to be able to attack, and I win. Well, just as a bit of a, an exaggeration. If he Holy Nova's here, he goes up to nine, heals to 11. I've got two spiders plus six is eight. He'd be at three health. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to kill him if he Holy nova doesn't have a Holy Nova, he has a Holy Fire, which is not the ideal removal card. This priest just did not have the right removal cards. There have been times where I've been like, oh, I can't believe I played this person at, you know, 10 wins. It was such an easy game. But I don't think this is one of those cases. I really think this guy probably has a good deck. He just didn't get a good draw. All right, let's mark the wild that to protect it from Holy Nova. And get some extra damage through. Couldn't quite kill him this turn. But I'm threatening lethal now. And I've got something that respawns. Something that's got Divine Shield and is immune to Shadow Words. And he has... Oh, is he going to put Divine Spirit on this? Oh my god. <laughs> oh, well played. So he's dragging this out, that's for sure. Is he going to silence this thing? Oh, does he have Inner Fire? Did he actually get the Inner Fire combo? Now that would be surprising. Someone who got the Inner Fire combo on a 10-win game. You know, he might have it. I mean, he's got Mogjan Warden, Divine Spirit... These are things that you do when you're going for the inner fire combo. So how much damage do I have? I essentially have to deal 16 damage to him. I've got uh, 4, 7, 8, 9, plus 6, 15, 16. Okay, so I do actually have the damage that I need. Wait, do these guys fit on the table? They do. Okay, so we're going to put them on. Whoop, whoop. Do, 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 do. Do, do. And my trusty spiders. So that's that spectral spider, that haunted creeper card being pretty good here. Oh, he conceded too fast. Okay, wow. So from five and two, I've just leaped up to eleven and two. Always just so disappointing to lose at eleven wins. But uh, even if I do lose, I'm pretty content with this. So my druid runs were three. And then 7, and then either 11 or 12, so I really can't complain too much. This is the fourth time I have made it beyond 9 in this new series. Out of, let me look at my stat sheet here, while the Victorola keeps on spinning, out of 16 arena runs. Wow, I got a lot of arena runs done. I guess it has been over a month, hasn't it? So yeah, I've got, uh, this, is, this is my 17th run in the series, and four of those have been up to 10 or higher. Yeah, I'm pretty happy about that. Pretty happy. Yes, indeed. Um. De Winter. So we finally break our streak of getting new classes each time. We had Shaman, Rogue, Warlock, Warrior, Priest, Warlock, if I didn't say that already, and then again Warlock. Okay, cool. Let's see if this guy's aggro or not. Probably, I would expect it to be, just because... Aggro is the thing. He doesn't do anything, though. All right, well, since I've got a, a pair of two drops, I will just go ahead and play the Pine Size Summoner. Let's make him sweat. See if he's got the Demon Fire Ford or a Blue Guild Warrior. He doesn't really want to, like, use Stole Fire for that. But if he does leave this alive, I can actually sneak an Acolyte of Pain out on turn two, which is pretty cool. No, he's got the kill. He's going to Demon Fire, which is the perfect answer to a Pine Size Summoner. So had I played the Creeper, Demon Fire wouldn't have worked. But then again, if I'd played the Creeper, he might have played another minion, like a 2-3, and then I would have been in, a, in an annoying place. Alright, so the Raptor's a pretty good answer here. It's annoying because either I have to pop my spiders and use Shapeshift, or I can use the Blue Glow Warrior to kill it, or I can Claw to kill it. Well, why don't I Claw to kill it? It's a pretty good thing. And then think. I, this is a bigger creature. It'll kill bigger things. The Blue Glow Warrior, though, lets me pop these spiders eventually and power the wild to buff them up. I don't know. It's risky because now if you play something like Ascension or a Yeti, I'm going to regret that I uh, did 
didn't play Power of the Wild. If he drops a Mortal Coil, I'm going to regret that I didn't do Power of the Wild also. So it's a risky move there, not, not playing that Panther. I'm violating my principle of a good option now is better than the best option later. And he does have the Mortal Coil, so crap. I really should have played this. It would have been a good option then to have a 3-2 instead of a 2-1. I went for the better option later of getting to puff these spiders. And that was probably a mistake. So how good is this 3-mana move going to be? He's already gone up a card thanks to Mortal Coil. He could go up another card with Life Tap and not be at too much risk. He doesn't know this, of course, but I mean, all I've got coming up is an Acolyte. I could play the Panther, I guess, because it's just a bigger body, but that seems silly because it's an inefficient use of my mana and because this deck needs to use mana efficiently since I have so many expensive cards. Arcane Golem, he actually gives me an extra mana. Wow. Wow. I don't agree with that play. So I could play the Druid to the Claw. I could also Acolyte Shapeshift to kill off this Arcane Golem. Or I could Acolyte and, and then buff this to make this a 2-3 and kill the Arcane Golem. That also make this a 2-4. That seems a bit silly, though. Hmm. Hmm. Do I play the Druid to the Claw? Just 4-6, stand in the way and let it let this thing live? Problem is, if he has a Dark Iron Dwarf or Abusive Sergeant, he could just kill my Druid. That would really suck. Hmm. Alright, what I'm gonna do is this then. I'm gonna shapeshift to kill the arcane golem. I'm just gonna hope that these guys live, or at least some of them do. Because then, if I can play Power of the Wild, and maybe if I get lucky, draw four or less mana minion, I could get a really huge use out of Power of the Wild. Let's see if he's got a good answer here. There are several things he could do that would be really spectacular for him. Because your Drake's not exactly one of them, though. He does go up another card, but that wasn't really one of the things I was the most concerned about. Alright, so again, I could play Druid of the Claw. I wish I could play Druid of the Claw and Power of the Wild. I cannot, however. I could play Power of the Wild, make this a 2-4, throw these two spiders at that thing. But then I've got four mana that I'm doing nothing with. Crap. This sucks. All right, what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to risk it. I'm going to play Druid of the Claw. And now there are definitely things you could do that would really make my life hell. But I feel like it was worth it. So I'm going to get this guy a turn early next turn, probably, unless he does something really spectacular here, which he definitely could. He's got a lot of cards. Hmm, I'm not sure I'm making the right decision. I've had really tough decisions to make this game, and I'm not sure I've made the right ones. Does he have a soul fire here? He does. So that's for f six damage. Oh my god. Because he's got plus two spell damage, so that was incredibly good. He killed my Druid of the Claw with a soul fire, spending zero mana in the process. And now I have nothing to do. Swipe doesn't really work very well. All right, well, we're going all in on this play minions and hope you can't kill them gambit. I can't kill any of his things with my stuff. Oh, lord. I definitely... If I lose this game, it's because I definitely misplayed it. Sure, just killed his Azure Drake and called it a day. Alright, he is going to attack me. Does he have another Soul Fire? He actually has a Shadow Bolt for 6 damage to kill that off. And he's continuing to pound away in my face. And he also has a Sengen to stop me from being able to kill his stuff. That's really frustrating. Okay. Hmm... Swipe, Descension. It's at one, it's at one, this is at three. And I could then kill off all of his stuff with Power of the Wild. What else would I do? I would play Novice Engineer. So let's do that first, see what I get. Always draw cards first. Okay, I'm not going to play that this turn. I'm going to swipe. Power up. Use the Acolyte to kill the... I don't get to kill all of his stuff. Oh god, I miscalculated. Ouch. Crap, I really should not have left him with this Azure Drake. Well, you live and you learn. So now he's going to get to hit me down to 10 damage, and given how much burn he's at, I think he might actually be able to finish me off. I also don't have any taunt, so I'm at the mode where I have to kill everything he plays. All right, lose. That was really silly. I should not have played that Novice Engineer. I should have saved the mana to shapeshift and uh, kill the Azure Drake. So he gets me down to 10 health, and now I'm in pretty big trouble. Sengen again would take all three of my creatures to kill, and the flesh-eating ghoul is going to grow all the while, so we got a pretty good deal out of there. I need to get a removal. Get Cult Master. Well, the Cult Master could find me removal, so I'm going to do it. So Cult Master acolyting into this gives me two removal card or two card draws. That will do, but it's not ideal. So we're going to just keep pumping into this engine. 
That I can play to silence, but that doesn't actually do much for me. Um, all right, let's just go for broke here, I guess. Fire. Call the flashing ghoul. And I can play just the ooze or these two things both. So I think it's better to get more things than less. Now I'm going into six health with two cards. He could definitely kill me. But if he doesn't kill me this turn and he doesn't and if he doesn't clear my board, I can actually win. The problem is he's just like a power overwhelming and a hellfire or power overwhelming and dark iron dwarf or power overwhelming and soul fire sort of a deal away from killing me. But if he doesn't kill me this turn, I could crawl back with shapeshifts and taunts. So let's see what he's got. This is tense. This is for the this is for the twelve wins. I should have killed this Drake when I had the chance. My Druid of the Claw ended up dying to Soul Fire. Just a six damage Soul Fire. If I had used it just to kill off this Drake, I would have still been in trouble. But I, this thing wouldn't have hit me for like four damage a bajillion times. Well, he's think he's taking his time, which might mean that he is just stalling and bad mannering. Decides to life tap, which is pretty fine. He draws another card. Okay, well, this makes it a little bit more likely he's not actually killing me this turn, which is good. Does he have a kill for my cult master? That's what he's looking for, so he can kill my other stuff without having to worry about it. He did, in fact, top deck a kill for my cult master. So a mortal coil would do it, demon fire, shadow bolt, anything. Note that mortal coil with spell damage kills cult master. Observe, though, that this Cult Master was crazy. I got, like, what, four cards out of the deal? It was pretty crazy. So he has Drain Life, which is fine. Now I can kill this Drake. I'm still at six health. Things definitely could be worse. Definitely could be worse. All right, let's play Iron Bark. Shapeshift just to gain life. And we're going to pop the shield and the Zombie Child to kill off that Drake. So seven damage is a little bit difficult to deal as a warlock when you only have a two four and there's an eight eight in your way, but it's, it's possible for sure. If he just has like an owl, then this is two damage and he needs five more. With two cards, he could definitely deal five damage. He could play like a doom guard or something. So it's still not over yet. I still need a couple more turns of shape shifting before I feel confident. That is a good thing to see because that's pretty immaterial, and that is unfortunate because that means my iron bark is dead. So I have one of the ugliest choices ever to make now, which is either I leave my Iron Bark alive killing something else, and just hope he doesn't have enough silence to get through, because if he can silence all my taunt, this thing is lethal damage. Or I could use the Iron Bark to kill something, go for an advantage that way, but then um, if he does have the taunt, I, I lose. If I kill this, he's going to have both of these guys left, because I can't draw removal to save my life. Hmm... Silencing, this is interesting. That would essentially deal two damage. Leave me with six mana. I could use this to kill that. All right, we're gonna try this approach. I'm gonna silence the Twilight Drake. Kill it with my Squire. Get a little bit greedy now, this is risky. But I'm gonna gamble that he doesn't have like two silences. I'm gonna gamble that the Sea Giant can't get through. He can life tap freely, but I don't care because my cult master drew me so many cards. I might still be able to win. Now I didn't shapeshift that turn, which is scary. But again, if he didn't, if he couldn't deal seven damage to me last turn, he shouldn't be able to do it this turn. Even if he, if he has like two silence cards, or like a siphon soul and an owl, or a siphon soul and a spell breaker, he actually could, he actually will win right now. But it seems unlikely. Uh, this is proving to be quite the epic game at eleven wins. Usually. My games to get to 12 have been, you know, they're like normal games. It's always nice to have a particularly tense one on camera when I post everything and you have no idea how it's all going to end. Alright, well, this is good. Either he's exceptionally bad-mannered, 
or he's just not sure how to proceed. He has the same decision to make that I did, which is do you try to kill this thing and go for an extra edge with your Sea Giant, or just pop the Sea Giant against the Iron Bark right now? It looks like he's thinking about going for the Sludge Belcher. The risk, of course, is that now the Spellbreaker could then attack the Sea Giant. It's left at one health. If I have a swipe, the Sea Giant would die, and he decides not to do that. Oh, also because this thing would have killed his own thing. All right, so he made a pretty good move there. Pretty good move. Okay, we're not out of the woods yet. Um, This actually is a really timely top deck, isn't it? Yeah, we're going to do this. I can't win. 7 plus 6 is 13. He's down to 7 health. Yeah, I can't win. But we're going to play this. And so now... That kills that. This... Kills that. Two damage to the face doesn't really make a difference. And I'm going to play the Ooze and Shapeshift. I would have liked to have the 2-5 rather than the 3-2, just because it has, you know, two extra stat points total. But I need a Shapeshift. And the extra damage to his face is gravy. The disadvantage of playing the Ooze is not insignificant, however. It leaves me now unable to play the Ancient of War and the Storm of Night. If I play the Storm of Night, I could play the Ancient of War and the Ooze. But I might just play the Ancient of War and the Panther anyway. Okay, so he's going to do that, which is a little bit annoying, because I can't quite kill this dwarf easily. Ah, Shattered Sun Cleric, that's perfect. So now I can actually have my cake and eat it, I can play with that guy, I can do this, kill the Dark Iron Dwarf, that, kill the Quester, get my other Taunter, so I've got lots of Taunt. Man, it feels so good to play with Taunt. I feel like most of the time I underdraft Taunt just a little bit. It's good to have it. Now, I don't... I could still lose to something really silly, but like if he had a soul fire, life tapped into another soul fire, but thankfully that didn't happen. He's got an ogre. And I've got a swipe. So how important is it to try to kill everything? Let's see. I can hit this guy and then I got five, six, ten, twelve damage. Let me just count that again. Five, six, ten, twelve, eleven. Ugh. Egg. Wait, I could swipe his face down a 10, use this guy to kill the Voidwalker, and then I can hit him for 8, 9, 10. Oh, yeah, I think that does work. Or if it doesn't, I have two taunts, I should be fine. So we're gonna do this, this, this. And that is, in fact, 10 damage. So if you just rearrange things a bit slightly, you can win. So for the 12th win, I got a pretty good game. I don't know if I played that correctly. I definitely took a lot of damage, and it, it was it was to the point where a Warlock with slightly better cards would have won. But then again, I got him to use a Soul Fire in my Druid of the Claw. If I had, if I had just thrown the Druid of the Claw away against his Drake, he would have used the Soul Fire for something else. It's hard to say without a really deep analysis of the situation what it was but anyway thanks for watching don't go away this is only 33 minute mark so we're going to actually I'll start another run wow that's a lot of money what do we have here 25 65 that's a 290 so this is 455 wow, 485 gold did I actually count that right 485 gold was it 200 so 300 300 plus 90 so that's 390 390 plus 90 is 480. That's 485 gold. That is a ton of gold. I'm actually over 10,000 for just a second here. Whew, that's a lot. No cards, no legendaries, no golds, just tons of stuff. So let me go ahead and mark in my spreadsheet what has just taken place. I just had a druid run go to 12. And I'm really looking for Mage and Shaman, because those are the classes I've played just the once, which means I'm going to go ahead and grab Shaman, even though Warlock has been really embarrassing. Um, Shaman, it's time to play you again. Okay, we're starting off with an epic, very, very, very interesting choice here. The Echoing Ooze, I'm going to say, is probably the bottom pick. I think a pair of 1-2s for 2 is not that great. And I think that the potential for interaction, like, you know, buffing it before it, it spawns, is not that great either. It's really not as good as Sea Giant, which is just a great endgame card. Shade, I'm just not a big fan of. We're going to take the Sea Giant, just stick to a good endgame card here. Hmm, Rockbiter or Forked Lightning? 
I'm gonna take the Rock Biter. I think it's just too good. It's got too many good interactions. Lightning Bolt is great, even though Cult Master won me the game. Reincarnate's a fun card, but not over Stormforge decks. And Fire Elemental is Fire Elemental. All right, uh, still nothing interesting to do here. I'm not gonna take a Gold Shire Footman. So we got a lot of endgame. We gotta be a little bit careful. Reincarnate is a very fun card, but right now I have no synergy with it. So I'm gonna take a Cobalt Geomancer because it's really good with Lightning Storm and Lightning Bolt. I don't like this guy. <coughs> just one Stormforge Dax, he's most likely just a 2-1 for 1, which is uh, not that great. These guys, though, I don't like either, so it kind of sucks. I guess I'll take the bad 2 drop over the bad 1 drop. Okay, Wind Fury is garbage. This guy could be cheap with Stormforge Dax, but not enough to warrant taking over the Stormwind Knight, which is just an excellent, excellent all-around card. Now, here we can go for what I'm going to say is a good 5-mana card versus a good 4-mana card. I'll take the Violet Teacher, it's such a good 4-drop, and I do have a fair number of spells already. Alright, second Stormforge Jax? Yeah, the Stormforge Jaxes are great. Alright, this is the third Reincarnate I have seen now. Do I have any syn synergy for it? I mean, I really don't, actually. There, there's nothing here. I could re-stealth the Tiger. I could get a 1-1. One, one. I could recharge with this guy, get an extra 1-1. One, one. Um, yeah, I'm just going to take a 2-drop. Gotta get that early game. We'll take some buffing. And we got a second epic here. I almost want to take Farsight as just a cycle card. That can potentially do some cute tricks. Faces Manipulator, though, is a good 5-drop. I just don't like taking another 5-drop here. I've already got a decent amount of endgame. Oh, gosh. Tough. It's tough. We'll take this. It actually does something. I don't know. Hex, haven't seen one of those yet. Glad to see one. We'll take the best two drop in the game. I don't want any more five drops right now. Actually, if this was all the end game I had, I'd be content with it. But, uh, so, okay, so we have Cult Master here, which can be really, really good, especially for shamans, if you can bloodluster taunts or play raid leader on against your, uh, sorry, your totems. But Fire Elemental, I don't know. I think it's still correct to just take every single one of those that you see, so I'm gonna do that. Wailing Soul, a three, five, for four. That could be really annoying. So I don't want this silenced. I don't want this silenced. I don't want that silenced. I don't want that silenced or this. Yeah, we're going to take the Crazed Alchemist, although I'm not that jazzed about it. Okay, another reincarnate. I think it's like the fourth one. Still not really seeing any synergy with it. So we'll take the Unbound Elemental. It's an excellent three drop. Feral Spirit goes well with Violet Teacher and is just awesome in general. Do I take this, or do I take the Panther here? I don't like taking this many 3-drops. I've already got... Well, I've got two that are creatures, and then one that's kind of sort of... I'll take a Panther, that's fine. Hex number 2, I think, <coughs> over Lightning Bolt. So the Lightning Bolt's advantage is that it uh, will deal damage to the face, and it can give you burn potential. But the Hex, just being able to remove anything, I think is worth it. So we'll take the Zombie Chow here to have a good 1-drop. And this sucks. So Wind Fury, I think, is garbage. It's always been garbage. Dynamic Mike is garbage. I'm going to just take the Storepike Commando and hope for the best. Here I can take a minion, or I can take this Lava Burst. Now, for end for burn potential, Lava Burst is about as good as Arcane Golem. Arcane Golem, obviously. Deals one less damage and is not affected by spell power, but it does stay on the board. Both are sort of late-game cards, because you don't want to give your opponent mana early. You don't want to... You don't want to give yourself overload early, either. We'll go for the Lava Burst. Although, it's, it was a close call. I'm not sure what was correct there. This is great. I need some more 4-drops. Good 4-drops do in games. And I can take another best 2-drop in the game, or I could take the Panda. Definitely not taking Frostwolf Warlord with 3-5s, um, 2 Elementals, and a Sea Giant. I don't want anything big, especially not something that's conditional. Do I have any synergy with the Panda? Well... Not really, no, maybe, no, me, not really, no. No, 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 definitely not. Maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit. Nope. Yes, could, could, definitely. And then these guys. So I do have some panda synergy here. How many two drops do I really have? So I've got uh, Zombie Tower, which I'll count as a two drop, even though it costs one mana, because it's got a two drop stats. Got two axes. Zerker, Crazy Alchemist, I could play, Geomancer, I could play, Time Hunter, Youthful Panda, I could all play. So this is a fair amount. I didn't actually count it, so look, how many? Let me count, and then let me not tell you what the number is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Go for this Panda. Might be a wrong move, but it's the move I'm going to make. Okay, well, since I took the four drop last time here, I'm picking between mediocre stuff. We'll take the mediocre two drop this time. 
And a rock biter weapon is perfect. Lightning Storm. Well, I've got everything a shaman wants. I've got my lightning bolt and rock biters. I've got lightning storm and hex. I have fire elemental. You got everything here. This should be a good deck, which means I'm going to lose the first three games. Actually, do I even have time to play a game? Yeah, I do have time. I have five more minutes. So this may, this may video might go a little bit long, but I think this deck is good. It's got a, a lot of early game and a lot of late game, which is how I like it. With a decent core of four drops. There's Violet Teacher. There's the Panda. There's an Omission Venture. There's some good stuff in here. I like this deck a lot. There's not really many quality issues other than perhaps, you know, I would have liked like one less five drop. And one less three drop and a couple more four drops. But that's just, you know, me talking out of my bizzard. Do I keep the panther here? No, I'm going to go for a two drop. I'm going to mulligan this and go for another two drop. We'll keep these guys around for removal if needed. But I'm going to go for it and I'm going to fail. All right, that's fine. So the Stormforge Dax, I mean, early on, this thing can just make you feel like you're going to win the game. Of course, if the opponent plays nothing but three health minions, which sometimes happens and you get screwed. Bloodsail Corsair. Well, that's amusing because he played it after, or sorry, before I played Stormforge Dax. I mean, it's not a mistake by any means. If that was what he had, he should just play it. Clearly, that was a really, really, really weak rare pack. It'd be comical now if he buffed it up with an, if he followed it up with an ooze. No, just a loot hoarder. That's all right. So loot hoarder is a good thing for him to have because it, you know, uses up a tick of my axe and deals two damage, but uh, doesn't give me any card advantage because it re replaces itself. So all in all, I'd say this is anyone's game right now. I kind of regret this is not a panther, but this guy is good to play next turn. And he still has his coin. He could play a yeti here, which would be very irritating. I'd have to hit it with the storm, storm of night, and okay, he doesn't have it. Good. All right, let's play this guy and think. I don't want to hit the panther with the axe, but I might hit something else with the axe. So we'll leave the axe here. I'm not going to hit his face. I really don't want to see Ascension. I don't want to see Coin Druid of the Claw. Both of those would be profoundly irritating to deal with. He's, I mean, I got off to a pretty fast start with the Stormforge Dax killing off his things and me having Zombie Chow to follow it up with, but uh, he's definitely in this game. He just needs one good taunt minion, and, and uh, my momentum will be halted. So he's going to claw and shapeshift, I presume, to kill off my Zombie Chow? Yeah. Well, I'm glad about that. So he spent, instead of playing a big taunt minion that I could not have dealt with, he just killed my one mana creature, which I am fine with. He does heal for four, but that's fine. He's keeping the panther hidden, which makes panther, or sorry, the panther hidden, not the panther. He's keeping the panther hidden because uh, if revealing it, I mean, it would just die to storm one night, if nothing else. So I could actually play the Tidehunter and the Totem to set up for the Sea Giant, but I'm going to play the Tiger instead. A good option now, better than the best option later. And this guy plus Totem is a weak-ass move. Let's get a 5-5 five, five down that he cannot kill, so that I'm prepared to bring down his stuff. Now, if he keeps that panther hidden and plays another minion, I could actually drop Sea Giant next turn if he's not removing his thing. Ah, I see. So that's well played. So he buffed up the panther and killed my guy. And now the panther also kills my tiger, or I have to hit it, him and hit this, him with my face to kill it off. Also, I'm not going to be able to play Sea Giant. All right. Well, let's use the Storm Pike Commando. Shoot that, shoot that, and hit him in the face with my Tiger. I've got 26 health after all here. I could definitely keep this weapon around. If my guy's living, he plays a guy, I can play my Sea Giant. But if he just spends his turn removing my stuff, it's going to be awkward because I'm then not going to be able to play Sea Giant. Sea Giant could have been a Shade of Nextramus. It could have also been the Echoing Ooze. Neither of which would have been particularly impressive here, so I'm not that upset about the Sea Giant selection yet. Ah, he's got the Starfire for my Tiger. So that means that I will not be able to play Sea Giant. Rather tragically. Well, why don't we instead make ourselves extremely vulnerable to a swipe while having a ton of removal in the hand and nothing to remove? Four twos, man. I'm learning to really appreciate these. A four two... It's easy to kill, but if the opponent doesn't kill it, you just 
hit a couple of, hit him for a couple of turns with one of those guys, and it really makes a difference. Is he going to Starfall now? He does have a pretty much full hand, so if he's got anything in his deck that would deal with this, like a Starfall or a Swipe, for that matter, he probably could. And he does have Starfall, which will kill everything. Again, preventing me from playing Sea Giant. Now I officially wish that were a Shade of Nextramus. If it were a Shade of Nextramus, I could have actually played it last turn. Are you kidding me? You're going to Innervate? Oh, ass. Wailing Soul. Hilarious. I am one mana shy of playing Sea Giant. So I could Rock Biter and just hit this thing, or I could Craze Dalkimus Lightning Bolt. I'm gonna go ahead and just Craze Dalkimus Lightning Bolt because I don't really care about Overload. Might as well throw that out. And I wanted to get this guy onto the board. And I wanted to save my axe. Still though, he's had very good removal. And little does he know he's been stopping me from playing a Sea Giant by just a hair every single turn. Yeah, this game's going on for longer than five minutes, isn't it? Yep. Okay, well, I could still win this if I can get the Sea Giant down, but the problem is I did not put anything down on the board because I drew a bunch of removal spells. And so I was not able to put up any pressure, so that means he's pretty much in charge of this. Please don't play Innervate. Thank you. All right, finally I can actually play Sea Giant. Do I want to use the Fire Elemental instead, though? The answer is no, I don't. So we're going to play Sea Giant because it's bigger than Fire Elemental. We're going to Rock Biter myself and finally use the last tick of this Stoneforge Axe. A life total is about equal. I got a Sea Giant down and I have a Fire Elemental in the hand. Problem is, I'm really down on cards. Minus this totem, I only have four cards on the table. He has eight. So he's really come out ahead in this card war thing. So that Ancient of Lore and just some good play. Oh, so I'm in trouble. I might have to start going for his face and hope I can burn him out. Then, of course, he plays that, so I need a Hex. Of all the removal spells I've drawn, the one I have not gotten is Hex. And I really need a Hex, because I don't want to break through two taunts. That's throwing away a bunch of damage for nothing. Ugh. Lame. Lame, lame, lame. So I could Fire Elemental this thing, Lightning Storm to kill it off, use this guy to break past the little sludge, and then I could still hit him in the face with Sea Giant. I think that's what I'm going to do if he lets me. I need to just try to burn him out. Wow, he still got his coin. No, what are you doing? Stop. Oh, Stormpike Commando. Balls. <sighs> All right, well, we're still doing this. So I'm going to Fire Elemental that. And Lightning Storm, the problem, of course, is that I have to use my Sea Giant pulling a 1-2 Tom, which is just embarrassing. Okay, so now, though, the good news, I mean, if we're looking at the bright side, I do have an 8-8 and a 6-5 on the table. So he's got 6 cards to, to deal with that, but Druids are not that great at killing such big creatures. He needs Starfire or Starfall to kill the Elemental, and how he's going to kill this, that's very tricky. I mean, pretty much he needs an Ironbark Protector to, to face it down. Or an Ancient of War. Which you could have. This guy's got a lot of removal, so he might have built up like an endgame sort of focus deck. And if he did play Iron Bark, I wouldn't be able to deal with it, because I still have not seen either one of my two hexes. But I hope you're seeing now why I took that second hex over the second Lightning Bolt. Okay, Shapeshift is going to bite. He is. Well, that's good news, because... That means my Sea Giant is probably going to get to attack unless he has a Sengen or some other cheap taunt to stay the path. Zombie Chow doesn't do it. And does he put, want to put Mark of the Wild on it? No, he's just going to buff it. Okay, that's fine. That is fine. Fine, fine, fine. Taunt is really good to see here. I'm just going to hit him in the face. Make him prove to me he can actually kill this thing and get past this taunter. So what I'm doing is risky. If he has another Starfall, he could actually clear my board. But I'm gambling he's not going to have a second copy of that rare card. And then I can just win. I mean, I'm behind him. When you're behind, take risks. So I'm gambling he's not going to get to kill the Sea Giant. He'd have to get past this taunt. He's got, let's say he kills this toe with a claw or whatever. He's got six damage here. He'd still need two more damage to finish off that Sea Giant. And I've got five damage over here. Ah, he's got an Iron Bark Protector. Okay, so my Sea Giant will die to that Iron Bark, and he's got a Molten Giant for free, which is not irrelevant in the slightest. I am in trouble. What this deck really needed was a Silence, and I did not ever get one. 
in the draft. I never saw any Owl or Spellbreakers. And Shamans did not get a, a Silence card from Nexramas. I also did not see any, um, what's his face? Earthshocks, which is the one thing I didn't see. All right, so I have to use this to kill the Iron Bark, and I have to think. Can I actually hit him in the face? He's got 11, 14 damage. A 20, I have to hit him in the face. I just gotta go for it. I just have to hope that I can finish him off. It's gonna be very difficult to do, though, with him having an 8-8 that he spent zero mana playing. So that was definitely not an irrelevant last turn Molten Giant. That was a pretty relevant one. At this point, all I have to do really is kill my minions and just play a fair game. It's going to be difficult for me to deal damage is enough to kill him, especially considering he's got shapeshift. Crap. I might have misplayed this game, although I might have just been lost from the outset. It's hard to say. I must Keeper of the Grove? Oh, well, I guess he's got the kill. He just needs a swipe now. And he's got it. He had so much removal. Oh my god, so much removal. He had nothing on the board facing against an 8-8 and a 6-5, and he actually managed to take care of business, which is sad. But what are you going to do? You're going to lose, and you're going to start the next video. So thanks for watching, folks. If you enjoyed this video, do please like and or subscribe, and I'll see you again soon with the rest of this run. Take care.